the reason we called the workshop tonight is because we have um, our ordinance, plastic bag ordinance in front of us for some time, and now we're all back together again, which is wonderful. Um, there are some issues that the council needs to consider to give Sharon some direction to uh, help with the ordinance that we have before us. So I did invite Amy Kreiner from the chamber, but I don't see her here. Um, Holly, I know, is here from EEDC. Plastic Free, Marion and Elaine are here. I did invite Mr. Melvin Thompson from the Restaurant Association who said he was going to come. And I know Ms. Price from Maryland Retailers was not able to attend, but said that she'll watch the recording and get back to us with any comments. Um, so they're here, the people are here in the audience are here as resources. This is a discussion amongst the council. So some of the things I thought we needed to discuss and give some direction on um, are the definition of what a reusable bag is, uh, compliance or enforcement, do we need to put a charge on the use for paper bags, um, what do we do about restaurants or takeout orders, and if the ordinance passes, what a potential start date or timeline could be. Um, we can always add things or any other questions, but that's kind of the focus. We're looking for some direction on that. Uh, the first thing I'd like to probably tackle then would be the definition of a reusable bag. Um, what you gentlemen consider, I know Plastic Free has sent out a couple examples. One being um, means of a bag with a stitched handle that is specifically designed and manufactured for multiple reuse and is made of cloth or other washable fabric or a durable material suitable for multiple reuse, reuse that is not made of plastic film. My question with that was, yeah. I mean, if you are, if you have like a bunch of plastic bags at your house and you want to bring, you're reusing them yourself, you're not getting new plastic bags from the stores, but you're actually using them your own. I mean, can't you just bring your own plastic bags and use them? Well, I think the good example is Aldi sells a reusable plastic bag. Uh, and I know I carry them in my car as well as cloth bags and things mm -hmm. like that. So, uh, is, uh, How does I, the Aldi I, one look? I haven't... It's, it, it's a big bag. It's, okay. it's print, stuff printed on it. It's got a handle. Okay. And... Uh, and it's it's a heavier well, like I said, it is a multi. It's not a single use bag. Okay. And I think what you're trying to get at, so I assume, is we're looking at what Walmart does, what all the grocery stores do, anybody else who has a very thin plastic bag that you know, even a Target bag would be mm -hmm. would by definition should be included in the and what we're talking about and i would think too i know one of the so not a shopper but i love the target app but if you ask them to deliver your, your order out to your car it's almost like if you order one thing from the frozen food one thing from here one thing one thing goes into one bag and so now you might order five items and five bags come out well, so those are the you know those two i think we need to they're a little bit thicker um but i would still consider those a so single-use plastic. The prohibition is on the store providing, so you could walk in with your plastic bags, right. in theory, and have them bag them, but or you bag them, depending on where you are. Mm -hmm. And that would not violate the way it's currently written, because it prohibits the establishment from providing, not from you taking in. Right. Good. We could change that, but that's the way it's written now. Right. I think we get you can get too far in the weeds. I think mm -hmm. what we're trying to do is just yeah. get them to eliminate. And I know I visited with uh, with some folks at Walmart leadership, and corporately they're now looking at uh, going to paper bags because what's happened in New Jersey, Delaware, and North Carolina, other places. So you're you're yeah. starting to see, and also some of the major grocers and sites that I've looked at are now starting to do away with plastic bags and they go back to paper bags too. So I think one of the things, see that. you know, like the thing that Ron sent around was when you're looking at thickness, that it gets too much into the weeds. I, I think agree. We, that's two, three millimeter, four millimeter, that kind of thing. Yeah, who's going to measure it? Exactly. You know, I, 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 blasphemous, I hate to say, say this, New Jersey bans plastic bags regardless of thickness in grocery stores and retail outlets. 
And then they go on and say a, a reusable carryout bag is one that made a polypropylene, I got the first time, fabric, PET non-woven fabric, nylon cloth or hemp product, or other washable fabric, and has stitched handles and designed and manufactured for multiple re reuses. That, that sort of gets all of it. Mm -hmm. That's similar to... Yeah. But I mean... Right. But who's going to be the bag police? You know, well, as they yeah, come in and... I, I, I think, and I, my guess is, that uh, we don't really need to do a compliance thing because they, they'll, they're, they're going to end up being embarrassed to do it because they're going to get attacked. I mean, I, I, I went to Lowe's before I went down to Florida, and we were checking something out, it's, and thing says, are you using your bags or ours? So it's, and then, then, then we went over to um, Acme, went, and went to the self-checkout, and they had a pile of, of take-home bags like this. It said, free, take them. Yeah, but, but I, we've got our old trunks full of our bags now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Same here. Yeah. But I mean, one of the things that I noticed on, on, on here, and I don't know how we get around it, but when we say what it doesn't apply to, we've got a third of a page there. It's right. Like page two. Do we need all that? I frankly think you do because of the products that it talks about. You know, you don't want to put uh, dairy products, you don't want to put fish products or poultry products in in a, re, a reusable bag. I mean, and it ties in with what was proposed by Brooke Learman for the state ban. It ties in with New Jersey and everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. The only thing, you know, frankly, uh, that I, I would like to look at as we go through this is, is take out delivery food and beverages from restaurants and food services. And I've been visiting with those places, and, and they're asking us to put that in as an exemption. Mm -hmm. That's the one that I've been struggling the most with. Well, because there are restaurants out there that already do take out with just paper bags, and it, then there are restaurants that do a paper, maybe they'll put a plastic over it. And just remember who got hurt the worst during COVID for the last two years and who we were all worried about and they changed the law so that you could actually take w drinks with liquor in them as carry outs and put them in your car and take them home. I mean, we did a lot to try to maintain our restaurant business. I, I just think this is uh, another example of us standing up for the restaurant industry. Yeah, I, I agree, I think the restaurants, especially some of the Asian ones, you're gonna get a lot of fluid in them. I mean, paper's just not going to do it. They, they don't have those little fold-up bags. We, we used to have Chinese food all the time. They don't do that anymore. So they've got to come up with something that's not going to go all over you and your car before you get home. And, and, and certainly if you're going to spend 100 bucks on dinner and you got to have it left, you want to take that half home with you. Well, you put it in your car and your seat. <laughs> you don't want to be on the, any liquid that would spill would be on your seat. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. It just makes sense to to add that, and uh, I looked at the Delaware legislation that was in the Delaware legislation that's in most of the legislation. Mm -hmm. Delaware, Westminster does it, New York does it. Yeah, and I'm in agreement as far as the restaurants go. My question is, as far as takeout goes, what about establishments like Wawa and Royal Farms, which you can get takeout from those places too? Are those well, going to be included in that? Well, if we adopt restaurant or food service facilities, Food for service facilities would be Wawa, uh, places like that, because you can get chicken from them, you get sandwiches, right. you're, you're getting all kinds of uh, food products. And a lot of the, you know, I see a lot of work men and women, you know, driving their trucks, going there, picking up a sandwich, people on the road picking up a sandwich uh, or chicken or something else. So There's a difference between, I understand the argument of helping the restaurants or local restaurants, but... A lot of those places are the chains. They're dealing with this in other states already. I'm not sure I would put a Wawa and Boban in the same category. But a Wawa is paying taxes to us. A Wawa employs local people. I mean, you know, they're contributing to the, to the value of our community. Uh, if you need gas, where are you going to go? You know, because there aren't as many independents. Uh, if you go to the gas station on Port Street, they're doing pizza. They're doing scrapple sandwiches. They're doing uh, chicken. They're doing, you know, hoagies. Sure, but a lot of, the, I mean, the argument the first round was a lot of the restaurants with 
stuff that has sauces in it, you're not going to get a lot of sauce from those takeout. Some of those, some of those, well, if you got fried chicken or stuff like that, that stuff's greasy. And uh, it, it will go through paper bags. And, I, you know, I just think that if we do uh, uh, the takeout on delivery food and beverages from a restaurant or a food service facility, we've got it covered. I don't want to start discriminating against different types of businesses just because they sell gasoline and they sell other products versus just somebody who has a restaurant. We disagree on that one. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think a restaurant is a restaurant and a gas station or convenience store is different. Well, you have barbecue places here, barbecue joints. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But they use paper already. I mean, the one down here does. Some of them do and some, some of them do. don't. Yeah. So it depend, depends on. And, you know, eventually I think you're going to see that the, the supply chain is going to change and they'll probably end up using uh, getting away from plastic. No. I mean, I think I can use way for the restaurant, but I'm not in favor of the convenience store option. But that's just me. So do we have any kind of agreement or direction as far as a definition goes? We'll start with that. As far as what's non- What's a reasonable? I think what Ron, what Ron mentioned just earlier. gave us is yeah. an excellent definition Perfect. that covers all aspects of it. So, um. and the other one I would point out, well, it says pretty much the same thing as ours. The Vermont uh, mm -hmm. description of exemptions is only this much. They, they, they give you all a bunch of items in one sentence without doing item by item by item. And yeah. so it's, it's, I mean, you know, one way or That's another, it, co it covers, yeah. Yeah. covers the waterfront. Yeah. Mr. Engel, can you send that definition around? Is it this one? It's right in the packet. It's in New Jersey. It's in the, yeah, it's in New Jersey. This is the one. Yeah, I have that here. Reusable. Here, here, here. One of the 36 yeah. red verbatim. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have it here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Are we okay to move on? Yep. Okay. Compliance enforcement. Or do we want to move to the restaurant piece? I have that on here. Oh. We can do jump to that if you want. I have that down as four. Oh, okay. All right, restaurants. Rest. I mean, yeah. yeah. Sure, restaurants. Did you? Would you want to do that? No, I have a copy on there. I wasn't sure if Sharon needs it. I sent this but to yeah, yeah, we got we it. We have it. We're good. Do you have that? So, at, I'm at, sure it is okay. yeah, as I said, I would like to add uh, item number 15 takeout or delivery food and beverages from a restaurant or food service facility. And that would cover everybody in our community, any business that sells food. Thank you. I agree with that. So, that also you eat your meal and you're taking it to go doggy bag? Well, yeah. I think uh, whatever, other, whatever. That's still considered takeout. I mean, yeah. other Chinese restaurants and stuff like that, they don't even, I, I don't I've ever seen anybody eating zinjin, but like the other ones, you get all your <laughs> stuff in the bag and away you go. Yes, yeah. You can, you can either pick it up or you eat there and say, I want something to go, and you put it in a to go bag and, and you go. Did I miss the newspapers? What about that? We're not there yet. Oh. But that's that's <coughs> exempt. That's on the list. You want to ban those? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> so the question I have though is any place that serves food or beverages, Target has yep. a Starbucks in the so that's why I asked the question yeah. before because I think there's there's some tricky things here. Yeah. Um, you know, Target has a used to have a Pizza Hut in there. I mean, right. you know, well, well, have yeah, Starbucks. Mm -hmm. so, I think once again, if it's a, if it's a food product, if it's a wet product, and I would say a um, restaurant is you know a restaurant only deals in food. Otherwise, I consider those convenience. 
that you know, gas station, blah blah, whatever that is, Walmart, Target. I put them all into the same category, and I, I'm not sure they should be exempt. But that's well, just you're me. Kind of represent the restaurant thing in the back. Right? But I, I, I think that uh, the restaurants and those other places should be exempt. And secondly, I don't think that we can even begin to come up with um, some comprehensive uh, rule that covers everything. There's going to be some spots, but I, I agree with Al, I agree with Ron, that the restaurant should be exempt and those other entities, because if you don't exempt the, the Wawa's and the other places, they have evolved over the years. They may have started out with just a few things, but they've evolved into other food products and we don't know how they're going to evolve futuristically. So they do have some wet products that um, they take out. We should include them also um, in the exemption with the restaurants. That's just my thoughts. So yeah. We're just talking food. That would be the food service facilities. So we've got, what, three of us at least that feel that way. I just don't want there to be a loophole for someone to avoid, you know. So, and not to say that Target would do this, but Target's like, well, we have our Starbucks here, so we so, are actually considered a food. So, food let me ask service. you this. If That's you're, why if you're, if you're Target and you now have to buy paper bags, why are you going to go buy grocery? Uh, why are you going to buy plastic bags just, just for that other business? Well, Starbucks is Starbucks. It's a separate business. Right. That's right. Right. So, it's so not, you know, it's, whatever. I just want to make sure there's no loophole. Can't control them. Right. Starbucks is Starbucks. Don't loophole. <laughs> I don't see it as a loophole. No, not I'm not sure. in that situation. Well, so somebody come up with something. At the convenience store, it doesn't matter what you're buying. You can use plastic, or is it only for if you're getting stuff? We said kind food, of food service counter. Food service facility. Prepared foods. Yeah. So all the bodegas, the anything in my neighborhood, I guess that all counts as. So that was the thing, like the market down around the corner. They just want to make sure that they're happy to comply with whatever. You know, went to Chess Mercy, whatever everyone agrees on. They just want to make sure that everyone is compliant. Now, according to this, they don't have to worry because they sell. It's a market. They'll sell prepared food, and that's. A, I think. Okay. I think you know. You can make it so tight and so difficult. I think this is the first step. And I think we're going to see a conversion by lots of businesses as down the road to paper, especially as uh, the supply chain changes. And the question is, is the supply chain going to be able to keep up at this juncture? We haven't, we haven't even talked about that. But. Well, it's important. Sorry about that. All right, so I guess all we're potentially doing is grocery stores. And we're, we're looking at Walmart. No, we're not just grocery, grocery stores. stores. Any store downtown, retail store that sells clothes. Yeah. Right, I'm mean, food wise. It's yeah. only the grocery stores. I would think we would still, what I was thinking based on what I'm hearing is you would still leave convenience store in, leave restaurant and food service facility, but make an exemption for the like freshly prepared foods. So a convenience store that doesn't have that component would still have to comply, right. but it's the freshly prepared portion of it that wouldn't. <coughs> I think that's what I'm hearing. I mean, you can't, you can't go to convenience store without seeing them with freshly prepared food because they're not making money on gasoline. They're making money on the other items yeah, in, in the store. So my question is, as we talk about this, does that mean that Neighborhood Service Center, who gives out food, and St. Vincent de Paul, are they going to be, are, are they not going to be able to use plastic bags? Neighborhood Service Center, often have, they already use paper. They're big. They all use paper? Both I don't know them. about St. Vincent de Paul. Okay. But they're not retail. They're not selling. They're not selling it either. No, yeah. I know. I'm just asking the question. I mean, right, the way it's worded now, anyway, it would not apply. Would not apply. Because yeah, they're not a retail establishment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess maybe, well, I don't think they sell the food, but St. Vincent the Paul no, they sells their other they, items, but the food yeah. is the food. Right, they will have to change for their other items. Yeah. yeah. All right.
right, what do you guys want to do about um, charging on paper bags? The what? only thing I've seen, and the reason they charge, is to convince people not not to, I mean, to, them to comply with it, so they don't come in and buy bags. Um, I don't know that. Number one, we're, we can't really enforce it. We're not going to send the police out there, or certainly not code enforcement. Um, I think we have, I, I, I per personally and professionally don't care if they charge or don't charge. Uh, I, I think like Baltimore, where they're doing four cents the retailer keeps and one percent the town. One cent, yeah. 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 We, we, we don't need that. Yeah, and I agree. I don't think we need, I don't think the town should be profiting from this at all. Mm -hmm. But I think the whole point is if we're going to be doing this to assist with the environment, paper bags, the production of paper bags, the transportation of paper bags, the cutting down of trees to make paper bags, all contributes to pollution as well. So if the whole point is to help the environment out, then the idea is that we should be trying to limit people's use of paper bags as well, not just go from one to the other. Um, and so the idea of charging for the bags is so that people, again, it's the Aldi model, I guess you can say, is you know people will use less plastic and less paper if we are asking them to pay a fee for the use of the paper bags. Uh, and we're talking about, basically, we're talking about store, but we're talking about Target and Walmart, places like that. Yeah. See, I don't think it's the role of government to start telling businesses what and how much they should charge for products. Uh, I think that if they want to charge for the bags, that's their prerogative. Uh, I, I, I responded to the Retailers Association, uh, having worked 38 years for small businesses, chambers of commerce. Uh, this is something that we fought for years. You know, it's like telling people how much you should charge for gas, and how much you should charge for rent and stuff like that. I don't think that's government's role. I think it's up to the business to determine their model and how they do things. And Aldi's a great example. They go against they go against the grain and they charge you. They charge you 25 cents to rent their cart. We're not going to tell people to start renting their carts, are we? No, that's not our role. So I, I don't see why we should uh, mandate. I think if they want to, they should to help catch, capture the cost back of those bags because they're more expensive than plastic. They are, right. But I don't think it's our role to mandate it. I, I, I kind of agree because if we mandate it, then what is our role in the mandation? I mean, so what role do we play and and what are we receiving because somehow we got to figure out who in the city is going to monitor all of this, where the funds are going to go, and how, how do we do all of that? And, and I think that the onus should be on the business. And I think that if this ordinance will make people responsible because change is gonna come. What's scaring me now in this whole discussion is that we're getting away from the, the real issue, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, we're looking for a cleaner environment and things of that nature. And we don't wanna go too far out there that this, this ordinance gets all mushed up in the weeds. I, I don't want that to happen. And and I think that um, if we get too deep in the weeds, then we'll get away from the concept that is really on the table. There's some give and take, but I, I think overall, I mean, this is this is good, but we have to make sure that we take care of um, the restaurants, um, the other convenience stores that sells what products, and, and just maintain my, let me just get to the crust. My main concern is how do we enforce all of this? Let me just skip to the, you know, because <laughs> this is all good, but, and, and I want to say this up front, I do not want the police department to be enforcing this. So I just want you to know that up front. I don't know who's going to enforce it. You've, you've helped me tonight flush it out, but I definitely don't want the police department. They got too many things to do right now, and that should not be their main priority. So. Oh, I yeah, I guess I can see your point as far as the, if the ordinance is focused on helping the environment, then yes, the decrease or decrease in the use of paper bags along with plastic is really what's best for the environment as opposed to promoting the use of paper over plastic. The other thing we got to remember is 
And I remember, I'm old enough, so I remember when we went away from paper bags because they cut trees down to plastic bags. Uh, but the way uh, reforestation is done now and the species of trees that are grown specifically for lumber and for other purposes, uh, it's farmed a lot differently. And it's going to encourage more people to continue to do that as we move down this road. But the other thing is you, we, have a, we have an underpopulation of people who don't have a lot of resources. And we don't want to put a lot of burdens on them uh, because, you know, it's easy for, for you and I to go in and buy a bag. But for them, it, it might be a product that they don't buy because they have to buy bags every time they go there. So we got to understand that we're trying to do it for the whole community and, and not just those of us who have the resources. Uh, because everything, every time we mandate something to businesses, they have to raise the prices. And we've seen what grocery prices have become because of the shortages and because of the delivery problems and all the other things that are happening in our community. So we, we also have to consider, you know, I sit on the multicultural board. I, I understand the concerns, you know, in that community too. Uh, but we've got to take that into consideration. So it seems like majority of the council does not want to charge for paper. Is that correct? Don't want to mandate a charge. Yeah, it's voluntary. They want to charge. Okay. Whatever. I had a conversation with the committee, and they came up with a good idea for perhaps convincing people to uh, um, have fundraisers and stuff to buy. The reusable bags for people to sure. get out. And I think there's enough. I think when this starts, there might, there might be enough impetus for for things to do that. And getting in. and they've they've offered to help beat bushes with us and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that we really ought to take. Them. Then it becomes a community thing. So, so you're talking about facilitating some kind of educational program well, for every person in the community, and well, so therefore they all have an opportunity to get. A re reusable bag is that what you're saying? Well, that too, but I mean, I think that the, I was just more concentrated on getting the bags to them. Sure, sure. What you're, what you're, yeah. uh, okay. you're, you're carrying it farther, which I agree with. Okay, because there has to be an educational component. Oh my God, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, because you can't just you can't just say, bam, here's the, the 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 new ordinance. It needs to be rolled out in such a way that uh, people understand it. Mm -hmm. I mean, because sometimes people can't stand what they don't understand. So we have to be real careful in the rollout in the educational aspect of this, and especially, and, and I agree with whoever said it, especially for those the least in the lost. I mean, those who are not as fortunate. I mean, sixty dollars now in the grocery store is nothing compared to what it used to be. So we don't want people missing out on meals because we need to buy extra bags, so they can't feed a certain portion because of the bags. But this education component and working together, the collaboration gives everybody an opportunity to have those kinds of bags. So there will be no excuse not to be able to use that which is available. So. Why don't we use that comment to roll into timeline before we hit up enforcement? Start down at end. <laughs> <laughs> You segue well, I mean, I, I just, I just think there needs to be a time. I mean, sure. it, I mean, there needs to be. You want a number? Like six months. Six months, six months. minimum, first of the year, that it gives everybody an opportunity to know what is coming, and and so therefore we can collaborate with the community mm -hmm. to lay out a strategic plan on how this is going to operate going forward. Six months, uh, minimum in my mind. About six months from the date of signing. I'll support that. I hope that people can get their supply chain issues up, and if they have a problem, they need to come back to us. Mm -hmm. But that would take it to February. September. If we pass it in August, August. we pass it in September, then it's going to take it into February. March. Yeah, February. I think it is cleaner if we put a date just so people don't have to remember when it got passed and they know a date. So we do well, April, we'll do April, we could do April, we could do April 1st mm -hmm. next year. Something like that. Yeah. March 1st, yeah. April 1st, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a little easier for people to follow and to get the word out than 
six months from yeah. And, yeah. and looking at Baltimore, <laughs> looking at Baltimore, Baltimore did a really good job of getting stickers to put in businesses and and rolling it out. So we want to work with the with the plastic free folks to make sure we get everything really well organized. Get it on Facebook. Get it in the newspaper. Get it uh, and get stickers or whatever. It's put in the stores to remind people. I mean that's that's the key thing. We want everybody to be well aware. You've got the chamber. You've got the uh, Eastern Economic Development. Uh, there's a lot of folks that can work that market that's on our behalf. Mm -hmm. And not only them, we could partner with a lot of other organizations to help sure. out also. Because mm -hmm. I think it's important that the partnership is going to be the key um, to all of this. And the awareness, because the one thing you do not want is to have an individual or business say, oh, well, I did not know. Mm -hmm. We want to make it so that there's no way you couldn't have known only because you just don't want to know. I mean, because people don't get it until they really get it. I mean, so let, let me say it like this. On my cell phone, I got 2,000 numbers, but I only know one. And so people don't get it until they get it. And so you have to, you know, hit it over and over again. And I think that's very important to let people know what's going on. And I think all of us in this room around this ordinance can at least agree on that, that there has to be an educational rollout component that includes everyone and uh, hopefully meets the needs of every person in our community. Okay. So, so, so do you want to say like March first as a date, March fifteenth? March first like is an excellent date. It's my birthday. Oh, so there you go. always well, remember March first. But let me ask you this then. So is is there an assumption that we're gonna pass it, right? If when we pass it. Okay. If and when we pass it. Okay, I'm just asking, I don't know. I mean I mean I did, I mean I don't want you to put the car before the horse here now. I mean I'm just saying. So, so if it passes, if right? If it passes. Okay, all right. That's what In make a six-month sure. time frame. I mean, I mean if you say it already passed, I'll be, I'm cool with it. I just want to know how we operate. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. okay, I mean, I'm just yeah, asking, yeah. you know. You don't take the trains running, right? Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> all right, so I think we've tackled a lot, um, except I'm going to use the word compliance because I spoke with a lovely lady uh, outside the council chamber one time, and I said enforcement, and she said compliance. I said that's that's a much better term. So yeah. the compliance. How are we going to talk about talk, tackle compliance? Mayor, what's your thoughts? <laughs> okay. I know one of the articles I read had a hotline, uh, online form you could fill out to let them know. Um, and then I don't know if it falls under code enforcement after that or. Well, you get a complaint? Feeling, if it's not the police, then it's got it's got to be code enforcement. I mean, you have, yeah. those are our two options. I think you got to rule out the police. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. My good feeling is the way media runs around here. That when someone stops is, is not complying, Facebook and other person is going to eviscerate these people. Yes, yeah. I, mean, I have to eviscerate them, yeah. and it's going to cost them. And, and, and what I've seen is. So one, one of them was one place of complaints is our jurisdiction put the bag thing in there and we charged the bags and everybody went over to the, to the next, next jurisdiction. jurisdiction. Yeah. Well, I think that's a bunch of BS. And second of all, they can't do that. There's nowhere else to go over here. So I, I just, you know, that's I, not true. I think we ought to try seeing if they, if they can sell police first. If that if that's not doing it, we we'll come back with something else. Well, even if we say, uh, uh, well, if we need to name it for the city, but I think Plastic Free will do a good job in patrolling those uh, areas and do some serious reporting back to whoever to um, help facilitate it. I'm I'm quite sure of that that um, that. Um, so maybe we can make them the auxiliary um, compliance, <laughs> compliance police. Yeah. We're quite sure we'll get information back who's doing what. Well, I, I assume it's going to be on a complaint basis. And then if it gets a complaint basis, then who does it get turned over to to go out and investigate the complaint? Right. It'd be code enforcement. Code enforcement. Yeah. They already love levy fines for other things. Right. There's a fine penalty in here right but I think we need to look at that too because I mean uh, they have responsibilities sure. and how do we prioritize it 
I mean, we want to look at that too, that we don't overwhelm them either. But that may be a good spot, but maybe we need to talk about that a little more to see where we can fit it in somewhere. So, But we need to name it because if there is a complaint and we don't name it, then um, a person who complains is going to get the administrative jargon. They're going to get pushed around and the can's going to get kicked down the road and nobody's going to address their issue. And we at least want those issues addressed, unless we just say that the town manager will address them. <laughs> <laughs> you have one code enforcement person. See, there, there you go. So, that, but, but we can put something on the website and people can yeah, one of the jurors had something on their website. On their website, and, yeah. and then we can review it. Yeah. And I, I know we're going to get some help from some folks. Oh, that, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, yeah. that, that will be willing to help out, to lessen the burden for, yeah. for us or the town. I certainly think that a complaint-based system is probably one that would work well in the beginning. Yeah. And hopefully as this gets rolled out, the education component gets added in, um, everyone becomes more and more compliant. So eventually over time, hopefully this gets easier rather than harder. Do we agree that all these was the first uh, business that came to town required the use of plastic paper, uh, paper bags? If so, what was their model? Yeah, all these charges, they, they charge for paper. And um, it didn't take long for people to get used to that. Absolutely not. They do the same thing as some of the other businesses. Well, but you have one code enforcement person yeah. who cannot keep up with the inspections now. You don't put this on there. Is it anticipated to have more on staff? I know we have somebody out. You got you got two. We have one's two. One's out. One's out. I knew and that. And one does rental housing. The other does code enforcement. Oh, okay. So and we, there's we can't no keep redundancy up with either there. one. But excuse but, me. We can't keep up with either one of them right now. But let us not alleviate those people that have passion for it. They will be willing to help us out. That's I mean, we're going to put them to work. Is yeah, let's put them to work. <laughs> if they love to have their passion. Let's make them a part of the process. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, we're, we're building a partnership here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I got my email address with Phil from their stuff. All right, so we tackled a lot. So we tackled the definition of usable bags, compliance charging for paper or not, restaurant and takeout orders, and a timeline. Gentlemen, is there anything we may have missed that you want to discuss tonight before we see the next version? Anything, Ms. Van Emberg, that you need from us? I think so with the enforcement compliance, there's nothing that we talked about that would change anything in the order. Right. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure of that. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I think I have good you have everything you need? The only, the only other thing I would say is, is there any way we can make all those exemptions maybe a little bit easier for people to follow in the wording? Look at the Vermont thing, yeah. Sharon, when you get a chance. That's a little easier. Yeah. It kind of clumps them together. Mm -hmm. You make paragraphs. As opposed to a line item. You make paragraphs, you can make line items. Either yeah. way, it's going to be the same, the same thing. thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, if there's nothing else, gentlemen, then we can adjourn until our 5.30 meeting. <laughs>